So when I was a kid in like the 1700s or whatever, you couldn't really take music with you because it wouldn't physically fit in your pocket. So the only way you could take music with you was by humming and people like me who can't carry a tune, that was basically just sad times. In the late 70s and early 80s, we started to get portable cassette players, like the most famous of which was the Sony Walkman, which went on to sell, you know, hundreds of millions of units. And, it, you know, it's still quite sought after these days. Um, what that did was that you used cassette tapes. Now, if you have not seen one of these before, and you might not have, because I realise I'm very old now, this is essentially a reel of plastic, and the plastic is treated with an oxide layer, and that oxide layer can be magnetised. So if you take a sound wave and you use that to make a varying electrical current, you can then use that varying electrical current to make a varying pattern of magnetism on the tape surface itself. So what you have is a direct analogue of your original sound wave. So it's purely analogue recording. And analogue has a lot of advan advantages over digital. It tends to be noisier, but it tends to distort in a more pleasing way. And that's one of the reasons it's still, it's still popular. One of the nice things about this tape is it's stereo on both sides, but co companies very quickly realise that having stereo on both sides means you've got four tracks. Now, if, if instead of turning it over and playing the other side, you play all four tracks at once, you have a four track recorder. And that absolutely revolutionised home recording. OK, so where am I going with this? Well, I have a Tascam Porter 1, which is a 1980s four track multi-track recorder and it's it's not wildly dissimilar from what I would have done my first ever bedroom and small band recordings on. I picked this off on eBay and it wasn't working and I had it fixed fairly recently and I started playing with it a bit so I thought it'd be fun to talk about it. So this is the Tascam. It's not actually really warped and bendy by the ravages of time, it's just I'm having to use a wide angle lens to fit it all in. So essentially you have these channel strips with a rather sexy VU meter at the top um, and on each channel, as you might expect, there's a trim pot to set your gain coming in. You've got an EQ high, EQ low, I'm, I'm not sure exactly where the cutoff frequencies are, and you've got a pan. And the pan lets you assign where the sound is going in the stereo mix, but also it's important because what we're going to do the way that this records is you have a signal that comes in and then you have your left and right stereo bus and you can assign the left and right stereo bus via these switches here to record on the four tracks. So you can record up to two uh, instruments at once and if I just push that up that's now saying left bus so your left input signal is going to record onto track one so, and that's flashing to warn you and it's orange and then if you go to safe, it's green, so now nothing is recording. So basically you've got these assignable left and right stereo buses. So what you can do that way is build up two tracks at a time, build up your mix, and then on your faders down here, you can control how much of it, how it sounds in your mix. Um, and also I'm just peering over my camera to see what you want to listen to in your monitor section. Well, you've got tape, off, or mic line. So that switches between listening to what's recorded on the tape listening to bugger all or listening to what's coming in on one of the inputs on the side so it's pretty simple um, what I did earlier in the week when I had some time off my amazing job working on feel good series do do check it out on Netflix um, I just as an experiment I recorded some some of my analog synth my Behringer um, Behringer Neutron and then I played played it out through the outputs on the side through some effects pedals and built up a few layers so I'm just going to demonstrate, play, ooh, analogue. Okay, so playing back off the tape, we've just got channel one fader up. And we've got a very creaky pan part. But this is my analogue synth I recorded the other day. If I start to bring the other faders up, take the synth out the mix what we've got here is some reverb and some octave shifted reverb and then I think another octave shifted reverb so what I can do is just mix that however I want I 
One thing I should say is there is noise reduction because tape is inherently quite hissy, but what you can do is uh, sort of compress the signal as it goes onto tape. That way you're sort of reducing the dynamic range that you're taking up, so then when you expand it out again, you've got better signal to noise ratio. And you can also sort of pre-emphasis um, the frequencies so that you have more high frequencies, and when you play back, you remove the high frequencies, which means you get rid of some of the tape hits. It does work, but I forgot to switch it on, which means if I turn it on now, it just takes the top end off. So I'll probably just do that a bit in the computer. Enjoy my synth noises. So what I thought I would do as a bit of a demonstration, and I've not done it yet, but I do have this rather lovely um, proper um, proper instruction manual with proper instructions like there's a lot of detail in here it's really cool um, this tells you how to do what's called bounce down um, what you can do so you've obviously got four tracks on here because there's four tracks on the tape I've, I've got recordings on all four at the moment it doesn't really matter what I can do is take three of them and record them onto the fourth which means I have to mix them uh, and commit to that mix. I'm essentially printing the mix. I can't change it once it's re all recorded onto the same track. But what that then does is free up th three tracks so I can then record, let's say I record another two sound sources, I can then bounce those two onto this. Then I've got my two bounce tracks, free up these two again. Um, I can't really do maths, but according to the manual, before you start to lose quality uh, and run out of places to put things you can get up to 10 tracks by doing this so what I think I'll do is bounce three tracks onto one and then maybe put some violin or maybe some more synth effects onto the other tracks so yeah I'm going to read the manual and figure out how to do that okay so I think I've figured it out essentially what I'm going to do is use the right hand bus which means pan the three channels that I want to keep they're all panned to the right guess it doesn't really matter where the number four is panned. So the right bus has been routed to track four. So what that means is I can do a dynamic mix. I can sort of push these faders up and down, but I think what I'll do is I've just kind of had a quick listen and set them about where I think sounds good. So these three tracks are gonna go through the right hand bus, the pop out on channel four because of this selection switch and um, yeah, that'll be it. And if, if I'm happy with how with the balance of how they sound, I can then commit to that and three up these three tracks. So yeah, let's give that a go. I'm going to hit record, see what happens. this intending to use it in live applications the idea being that it can have a backing track maybe even a click track to also drive some of my um, my other devices that will take a click um, and the idea being I can put tape loops on here but I could have four different elements that were looped and I can fade them up and fade them down uh, use the pitch control to slow down and speed up the tape albeit that this has got a fairly limited range I think it's 15% and I could use all these dynamic elements to form the basis of a live performance, but this is made as a, um, as a recording device, so I thought it'd be cool to at least try and make some tracks on it. this really needs is some drony, distorted, badly played violin over the top. So this is a bit of a race against time because I'm running out of storage on my phone. Hi, I planned this really well. Anyway, I've bounced everything, all the synth tracks, onto one. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just layer up some violin. I can't actually play the violin, but 
oh, how can it be, right? rig for boring reasons but in order to take both our, the violin and the mix of synth tracks through the same effects chain I've got them coming out of left bus which then goes into delay and uh, octave pedal and then that comes out and back into right bus and right bus is sent to record so essentially we're popping out and back in in a slightly complicated way um yeah so it's not the best way of doing it but hey we're here now so let's give it a go okay so now i have four tracks of assorted noise and all i need to do is Mix them into stereo, so use the faders to set the levels and the pan pots to set the position. Um, I'm probably not going to do much of a dynamic mix because the pan pots could do with a bit of clean, to be honest, they're quite creaky. And then that's going to come out on the stereo bus into digital recorder, and that'll be my stereo mix down. And if you're feeling particularly masochistic, you can listen to that on my band camp. It'll be called, called something very pretentious, no doubt. But yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. So yeah, that's it. Happy Christmas, have a good new year and uh, come back next year for guitar fixing, synth making, general noise stuff and hopefully we'll actually be allowed out and um, we can 